welcome to what might possibly be the last, not necessarily card opening, because this isn't really a card opening. This is more of a card talk. Um, Pokemon this year <laughs> have released a Trick or Trade set that is comprised of 30 cards. And you can buy them at Kroger's or Kohl's and other various stores. Uh, I have not seen them at Walmart or anything like that. Um, my dad bought it at Kroger's when he was getting off work for my nephew had to open since they bought Kiki's delivery service for my niece. <clears throat> they figured they needed to buy him something to make, you know, even it out. Their children, they're young. Kai sees her getting something and he gets upset that he didn't get anything and vice versa. Emma sees him get something. She gets upset that she didn't get something. So when you buy one something, you have to buy the other something so they don't feel left out, even if it's cheaper than what you bought the other one, because they don't know the concept of that kind of thing. Um, so anyway, yeah, trick or trade. What is in this set exactly? What is it all about? Um, so trick or trade comes in a little baggie that you would expect it to find your candy in. Um, like the, the same kind of bag, literally. And in that bag, it's not candy. Instead, it's 40, you heard me right, 40 packs. But here's the catch. Just like the 25th anniversary celebrations pack, each pack only has three cards. 25th celebration has four cards, two normal, third card, with the potential to be a classic set, and the fourth card, the potential to be a Pikachu or Gold Mew. Variant, Surfing, Flying, Jungle, or Gold Mew, or Professor's Research. You know, so the first two were going to be normal no matter what. The third slot had the chance to be something, and the fourth slot had the chance to be something. And the Trunk or Tree set, you have 10 hollows and 20 normal cards. And you were guaranteed a hollow in every card, in every pack. Because um, I was with my nephew when he opened every single one of them. Which he started getting annoyed and frustrated. So he started having me opening them near like the last 10 or so. I always say 10. The last few. 3, 4, something, something like that. I opened like 2 or 3 throughout the duration prior to that, so I probably opened around 7 or 8 of the 40 packs itself. So you get two normal cards and a hollow in every single pack. And, look, I know kids are kids, and they're rough. They're gruff. They don't understand the value of this stuff. They just want it opened, and they don't care how. Um... Case in point, the way my nephew was opening these packs, just shredding them, flinging it around, throwing it, like literally crushing the cards to get the pack open. And when I, and when I told him, I was like, what are you doing? He's like, it's just the plastic. And I'm like, Kai, the cards are in the pack. The cards are with in the plastic. You destroy the plastic, you destroy the cards. And the way he was doing it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I did explain to him. A better way to open them. And I even showed my niece how to open a few because she obviously wanted to open a couple. You, my nephew Chagrinch, he did not want her to open any because they're his. And I'm like, Kai, look, look. The cards will be yours. You open, they were bought for you. They are yours. Let her open a couple. They're, they're still your cards. She's just opening the pack. There's 40 of them. You can let her have one or two. I mean, he let me have like seven. And granted, that's because he was trying to climb me and get on my shoulders. So I was opening these packs while he was standing 
right there jumping on me because I was sitting right there. Yeah, he was trying to get on my shoulders and jump and climb on me and like I was some kind of Mount Everest to him. I don't know. <laughs> He's cute. It was, it was a fun time. I enjoyed it. Aside from cringing a couple times about how rough and gruff he was opening the packs. But again, that's to be expected. I can't say I was better than him as a child. Granted, I don't think I was opening Pokemon cards at three years old. Okay, Momo. I don't think I was, but, you know, whatever. Um, because I probably wasn't. I mean, I really didn't get into collecting cards until I was seven. Um, sure, I had a couple Pokemon cards here and there. I remember, I vividly remember this, living at the old house when I was like five, four to six, somewhere in that age range. I don't know where, my, I don't. I don't remember which age it was exactly, but it was either four, five, or six. Um, because this is when I was still big into Pokemon, like the anime of it. Obviously, my parents bought me a couple card packs here and there. Nothing too crazy, nothing too elaborate. Um, like the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon thing they bought me for Christmas one year. That was elaborate. <laughs> no, with Pokemon back when I was four or five, whatever, it was yeah, here's a pack here or there, you know? And I vividly, I don't know why I did this. I, I really don't. But I vividly remember doing this. Um, back at my old house that we lived at when I was, you know, a toddler to young kid. We had carpet. The house was carpeted except for the kitchen, I believe. And the bedrooms weren't carpeted. But the mid-living room, the dining room, and the hallway to the bathroom and the two bedrooms were all carpeted. And I vividly remember... Uh, you know, taking the Pokemon cards and like basically plotting them throughout the entire floor straight in a line, you know, and then just standing back and looking at them. Because I, like, I have a lot, you know, for that age. Obviously, I have like 400. I probably had like close to 100, 150 um, Pokemon cards at that time. You know, and I didn't care if they were duplicates or whatever. You know, I just lined them up in a line. You know, making like this giant square in the living room of each car just laying right next to each other. Why I did that, I don't know. I, I, I can't explain it. I was four or five or six. I wasn't into cards. I just had them and I didn't know what to do with them. So I was like, yeah, let me just line them up and look at them because they're pretty cool. I didn't know what else to do with them. I didn't have Friends to play Pokemon with? Let alone friends that knew how to play the Pokemon TCG to begin with. So, fast forward to 7. I finally get into Pokemon. Or, not Pokemon. I finally get into an actual card game. Into it. Into, and it's Yu-Gi-Oh. You know. Good old Yu-Gi-Oh here. Yeah, I still have this card. <laughs> Beside me. And surely enough, little old brain dead me. I wasn't good at handling cards. I was a little more mature and a little more responsible with them. But to say I treated them with godlike tear care is a stretch from the imagination because I did not. I I wasn't rough and gruff with them like crumpling them up like my nephew is with some of his cards but I still you know tried to take care of them like I didn't care if we had a little bend here or there on the corner I didn't care if it got a little bent you know I didn't really care if they're like white specks you know I, I, I didn't care about any of that or if like Say the back of this was like getting a little damaged and the paint was like chipping off, you know? I didn't really care about that stuff like I do now. Um, but 
you know, back then they were just playing cards. They weren't collectibles. They weren't pretties. They weren't investments, as you could say. They were just playing cards that I would duel my friends with. So, you know, I can say seven to 12 year old me was better at handling cards than Kai, but he's three. And that's me like in my main childhood years. So who's to say he doesn't pick up a few things from me on how to take better care of cards as he grows older and if he gets some more into collecting cards. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> the world is his oyster. Maybe he drops cards altogether. I don't know. Maybe he gets into magic because that's what his father's into. Uh, it, it, the, the possibilities are quite frankly endless. But, you know, that's just enough of that story about me cringing over how he was <laughs> opening some of these card packs and, you know, me realizing that I was really no better at his age. But, you know, High Science 2020 and current me is cringing at him. So, trick or trade. This is what the pack looks like. This was honestly the best looking pack I could find that I dug out of the trash because um, I initially wasn't planning on doing this video and then I realized, you know, I could probably squeeze a, a good short video out of it. Yeah, trick or treat. Um, it's a cute idea that, you know, 40, 40 card, like 40 cards, um, 40 packs in the package with three cards each is a good idea. I mean, depending, like, if you're at a point in your life where you know your average trick-or-treater and you have 40 packs to give out, then that means you have options. You can... Say you're like my house. We live right next to the cemetery. You would think living next to the cemetery, Halloween, people would be drawn to the street. No, it's a barren wasteland. Nobody comes down the street but family. And when I say family, I mean family. If your grandparents, your aunt, your uncle, your mom, your dad, your family lives on the street, you're about the only people who come down here. Family members of the people who live on the street are about the only people who come to the street to trick or treat. We get maybe two trick or treaters at this house if we're lucky <laughs> every year. So by that, by that saying, you know, we could give each kid that game here literally 20 packs. Now you don't want to be mean. You don't want to screw yourself over for the next kid so you know realistically you would limit yourself you know we don't give very many you know five five per kid you know ten per kid <laughs> we're only expected four trick traders this year four per kid ten per kid whatever um no i think the happy medium if you know you're a low house like a low encounter house is like five per kid you know that, that that's the perfect number saves your butt Right? That's two, four, six, eight. That's eight trick or treaters that you're expecting to have max, by the way. Um, otherwise, I'd say two to three, you know, but like if you're one of them bumping houses, you might need to buy two or three of these suckers. Because, like I said, there's only 40. And I know people who get hundreds of kids. They're going to need to buy three of these, and they're still going to have a little extra left over. So at that rate, they're just going to look at the time and be like, all right, trick or treats, trick or treats ending in like two hours. Let's, you know, start allowing each kid to have two, two per trick or treat, three per trick or treat, whatever. Depends, depends on how, depends on context, obviously. So anyway, yeah, so yeah, it's a neat idea. 
And I think it's a solid quantity. And I think it's like a... From what I looked up online, I think it's $15.99 retail or $15.97. $15.90 whatever it is. I think it's $15... Basically $16. My cat just fell down the couch. That is interesting. You know, I think it's a good quantity um, for the price itself. You know, that means you're getting like, oh, I don't want to do math, man. But now I got to do math. I locked myself into doing math. I hate this. 40 times 3. You're getting over 120 cards for $16. With a, obviously... The set amount of three cards per pack. And there's only 10 holographics. And they're holographics. They're not full arts. They're not half arts. They're not Vs. They're just holographics. Um, but in context, for a normal pack, which is about 390 whatever, it's about $4, whereas you give is about $3. Um, I think so. It might be $5. If that's the case. Then. You're only getting like nine, four times nine would be 36. Yeah. 36 or 40, five. But obviously, with those chances, the odds of getting a better pull and a better card are a little higher. Now, now that we've gone over that, we've gone over you know the trick or treater part of it. What what's in it? Like I said, there's ten holographics in this set, and there are twenty cons. By the way, they do not have their own ID, as you can see here. It tells you that this comes from a set, and it tells you 105 of 189. So this does not have its own set. It just tells you, hey, this is, you know, from Chilling Rain, 55 of 198. And obviously, as you can tell, Gengar is the poster child, and then you see the Pikachu holding... The little pumpkin Pikachu head, which is on the cards, by the way, which is a neat little trick, you know, that they did with the 25th anniversary stuff as well. But it's a pumpkin head Pikachu. Honestly, I think this is really cute, and I hope Pokemon continues to do this with the Pikachu, where they, like, put a little Pikachu head in the corner of the picture somewhere. And they stylize it for whatever holiday season, whatever they're doing. Because I think this is just freaking cute. So... In this set, you have, let's get the boring ones out of the way, Spinarak, Aryados. Okay, this one isn't boring, but, you know, it's there. Nicket. Thievul is not in the set. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Uh, Sinistee. Now, as you can see, you know. Keep, keep looking at the Pikachu picture. Poltegeist, which I'm a little a little upset isn't holographic. But it is what it is. Zubat, which Golbat and Crobat are not in this set. Murkrow. Honchkrow is not in the set. Cubone, Marowak is not in this set. And Pikachu. So those are all the base normal cards in this set that do not have a hollow attached to it. Um, now, for hollows, we probably have you know a card that is very apropos for the set. Which is Pumpkaboo, which evolves into our first 
holographic we are showing off here. And again, it's just a normal holographic. Gorgeist. I, I love the holographics in this set with the shiny pumpkin and everything. Um, then we have Hatena, which my nephew did not like. Did not like Hatiana, did not like Hatterim, did not like Hatterim at all, either. Second holographic we are showing in the set. Um, obviously, how is it Halloween without the Dust Skull line? Dust Glops. And our third holographic we are showing, Dusk Noir. Is very cool. I really like that art. Then, of course, also very apropos, Phantom, which evolves into Trevenant, which is a Pokemon I have grown on over the years thanks to my Shining Catch. Honestly, did not like Trevenant before I caught the Shiny. Once I got the Shiny, I was all for Trevenant. Hey, Momo, you, you made your way up. Good job, Um, and then we have the Litwick line, of course, Lampent, and the very beautiful Chandelure. I love this card. I love the way it looks. I love everything about it. And of course, Ms. Dervis, one of my favorite ghost types. Pure ghost types and his evolution and holographic music mages. I don't think there's a hollow in this set. I don't like like the look of it, the picture of it. And now for the holographics that um, it's the reverse. Like I showed you the basics at the very beginning that have no hollow attached to it. They're just basic. They're just there like Cubone. There's Cubone, but there's no Marowak. You know, you get the picture. There's these holographics, but there's nothing that precedes it. Like our very first one we're showing here, Mewtwo. There's a Mewtwo, but there's no Mew. Mimikyu. Very beautiful looking Mimikyu. And of course, my favorite card from this set, Darkrai. It's one of my favorite Pokemon in general. And of course, Last but not least, Ghastly Haunter and Gengar. And those are all of the 30 cards in this set. Now, one last thing I want to talk about before I end this video is, you know, I looked it up obviously, to look up the set, you know, so I could organize the cards and figure out what we had and what we didn't have. And obviously, we had everything. We got everything. And out of all 40 packs, like I said, two of them were only two cards in the packs for some reason, not three. So we got gypped two cards. So, you know, our 120 was actually 118. That being said, we still pulled one of everything, at the very least. Um... But there were two in particular that we only pulled one of. And it wasn't Gengar. It wasn't Dark Cry, which a lot of people were saying was the um out of like the early openings. A lot of people were saying Dark Cry was the hardest one to pull. They were only pulling one per case, if even. Basically, they're saying you were guaranteed to get at least one Dark Cry if you bought two 40 pack, you know, packages. We pulled seven. <laughs> we pulled seven. We pulled four Gengar. But we only pulled one Spinarak. And then on the hollow side of things, there was one card we only pulled one of. 
Mimikyu. We only pulled one Mimikyu. Once again, odds are different for everyone. I, I found that funny that they said Darkrai was the hardest to pull. And we pulled seven. I find that very intriguing. Very interesting. Overall, I think this idea is very cute. And I, I very much like it. And if I had my own place this, this year for Halloween and was doing my own trick-or-treaters, I would easily go out of my way and buy I would, I would literally drive my sorry butt 40 minutes away to Kroger's just to buy one. <laughs> or two. Because, you know, I'd want some. I, I'd want them in the center. Obviously, my nephew pulled one of everything except for those two. Mimikyu and Spinarak. Those were the only ones he did not pull a duplicate of. But I think for the art of, you know, preserving these cards, I'm going to sleeve these for now and hide them from him so he doesn't destroy them. And then when he's older, I can give them back to him and they'd be a cute nostalgic gift. So that's how I look at that and saving and preserving. The, the two one-offs. Like, I don't feel bad taking the duplicates because he pulled more than well enough to not miss them. But then I feel bad about the Mimikyu and the Spinarak because he only pulled one, obviously, and I'm taking them to complete the set to, you know, sleeve and preserve. And like I said, in the future, I'll probably give them to him, you know, in some cute, nostalgic way. That'll tug at his heartstrings when he's older, maybe in his early teens and 20s. When I'm... Oh God, I don't want to think about that. When I'm 50? What? 20... When he's 20, that'll be 16 years. I won't be 50, I'll be 40. No, wait, I'll be 42. I'm not good at math. That's, yeah, 16. Yeah, I'll be 42. I'll be in my early 40s. That, I don't want to think about that. That, I'm 26. I don't, I don't want to think about that. I'm, I'm not, I'm single. All right. I'm 26. I at least need to find a girl before I think about being 42. Jesus Christ. I, I, If only I weren't so darn antisocial. If only I didn't have a, such social anxiety. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that is uh, trick or treat. Um, let me know what you think of the edit. Do you think it's cute? Do you think it's a good idea? Are you participating in trunk or treat? Or did you participate in trunk or treat? Trunk, trunk or trade? You know, giving them out to kids in your neighborhood. Or are you just going to keep them for yourself? Like my dad did with my nephew. Um, so yeah, with that, that, that's it. Happy Halloween. And remember, only you can be the best you you can possibly be. Ta-ta. For now.